Thanks, Christopher, for the introduction, and, and thanks um, to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present here today. My talk is focused on the use of tissue engineering as a tool for um, skin regeneration with uh, particular emphasis um, in burns. So over 5,000 patients present to emergency departments throughout Victoria, Australia, uh, with burn injuries each year, and approximately 300 uh, of these in, uh, injured um, patients are transferred to the Alfred Hospital for special care. Autologous uh, split skin graft remains the um, gold standard for treating these patients. Um, um, but the limitation of SSG or split skin graft is that in massive burns, the donor site availability um, becomes restricted. So cultured epithelial autograft or CEA is the only adjunct treatment that is available for these patients in um, some specialized burns units around the world. And as some of you are aware, CEA was developed back in the 70s by um, Rainbold and Green. Um, and CA still uh, is, in fact, the only adjunct therapy available to, these, to, to the patients. And it relies on um, expanding autologous keratinocytes um, uh, from the patients and grafting them um, back on the patients as um, sheets of skin. The take rate um, in the literature suggests up to 85%, uh, which is quite significant. Now, we've uh, established CA production at the Alfred for treatment of major burns, and the production is under a strict quality system based on GMP guidelines to ensure the efficacy and safety of the product. And this slide um, represents the process map for CA production, and I don't expect you to read all of that just um, wanted to um, highlight the um, uh, uh, specific points in the production, which starts with um, growing the feeder cells, and then isolated keratinocytes from the patients are seeded on the feeder cells for a um, couple of passages um, into 10 by 10 sheets that is grafted back on the patients. Also wanted to highlight um, time in process time points uh, where samples are taken for bio uh loading in the sample to ensure the safety of the product. So we started with a um, typical research lab and turned into a grade D room and introduced um, a restrict uh, cleaning and ganning regimes. Um, and um, I'm just going to show you some of the um, slides, well, one slide on the validation of the, of the CA product. So the top panel shows the expression of keratin-14 in freshly isolated cells, um, showing roughly about 65% of the cells expressing keratin-14, which is actually a marker for basal keratinocytes. The bottom panel shows the um, cross-section of the CA product. And so we've used a um, modification to the original um, CEA protocol and um, using fibrin gel um, to, as a carrier for, for the CEA for easy detachment and grafting. And the batch in the, in the center was um, actually um, grown on the right-hand side. Uh, for an extra 10 days to uh, sort of mimic the grafting procedure. Um, and what we showed here is that the cells um, that are sitting on the top there are able to uh, proliferate and stratify, um, or at least they have the potential to do that. Um, and in fact, this is um, remarkable because that patient is a 64-year-old um, lady. And so, of course, in reality, we won't get the same uh, amount of proliferation, um, but at least we show that this, the cells are, are viable and, and capable. So, um, 
So the clinical trial um, was actually approved by the Alfred Ethics um, Committee back in 2013. Um, and basically any um, adult that was admitted to the Alfred Hospital with 35% or over parents was eligible to participate. And the um, primary endpoint um, is mortality rate, CA take rate, scar quality, complications, and length of stay. Of course, the um, histological samples are taken to um, sort of monitor the, the growth of the, the skin. So um, I'm, here I'm showing you some of the uh, clinical um, data. This is um, actually our first patient um, was admitted with 56% um, burns. And um, the CA was applied um, on the left-hand side, you can see on the, on the arm, um, was um, on, uh, grafted on top of um, vascularized allograft. And then five days later, it's the, it, uh, this represents the first dressing change, and um, the dressing was actually left on. Um, as it was actually um, attached to the wound still, um, but you could see a very fine film of, um, of keratinocytes underneath. And the same patient, the same arm, um, four weeks later, showing 90% um, take um, that was taken by the surgeons, and the one-year follow-up um, shows um, quite a, a good heal. The patient was basically discharged with no um, further surgery required for the arm. The scale rate is, is not that great, but um, at least cosmetically it looks better than a typical SSG as it's um, smooth rather than having um, that zigzag typical look of SS, meshed SSG. So this slide shows a, a, a summary of our um, trial so far. Uh, as if CA was applied um, by its own, actually has a very um, low graft take. But when it's applied on a vascularized dermis, um, such as allograft, um, obviously the take is a lot higher. And also when it's applied in combination with SSG, is is um, is. Uh, quite impressive. Two other patients were also treated with CA, but CA was lost, we think, probably due to infection in the patient. So there is a lot of um, factors involved in the take rate of CA. Um, for example, how good and how well vascularized um, dermis is actually um, uh, uh, provided for the CA to attach, um, and also infection is a big problem. Um, for CA take and, um, of course, patient age. So I hope I've convinced you that CA um, does work, but there is also a number of limitations with CA, and probably the, the biggest limitation is that it requires um, a well-vascularized dermis to function, which means that the patients will have to go um, two procedures, probably two, two weeks apart, to first um, replace the dermis and then um, replace the epidermis with, with CA. So the aim of our, our um, research project is to develop a functional composite skin that can close a wound in a single procedure. There is a number of uh, human skin equivalent or composite skin um, in the literature um, used for a number of um, research purposes, but it's, it's clinical application um, that we're interested in. So we um, isolate keratinocytes and fibroblasts um, from, from an individual. Uh, the fibroblasts are seeded into uh, a dermal substitute called Integra. Well, the data I'm showing to you today is mostly um, in vitro data of uh, using, using Integra, which is a collagen-based um, matrix. Um, it's porous and it's, it it's off-the-shelf, so it has regulatory 
um, approval for use in uh, most of the countries. So we use off-the-shelf matrix for our experiment to um, fast track um, our, our product into clinic um, rather than going through the whole um, process of um, regulatory licensing and all that. So when we seeded keratinocytes um, into fibroblast populated Integra, we basically faced um, a, a, an issue that um, uh, pretty much everyone else did, and that's that the keratinocytes actually fall into um, the gaps and, and make these sort of cyst-shaped structures. Um, and then when you compare the differentiation using a keratin-10 marker, in native skin, you can see that keratin-10 is expressed super basally um, in stratified skin, but in um, uh, this HSC, they, they uh, express um, towards the center of the cyst, and the, this, the skin basically has nowhere near native morphology. So, we came up with this um, novel methodology um, that is clinically applicable and you can use it um, for basically any porous matrix other than Integra. Um, and that is once the cells, fibroblasts are populated um, within the Integra, then just prior to addition of the keratinocytes, um, human plasma is cluttered into the matrix to provide a smooth surface for seeding the keratinocytes, which then go on and make a, a neo-epidermis. So this way, uh, we improved the morphology of the skin. And if I could just go back and point out uh, addition of a protein, which is a serine protease inhibitor, and it basically um, inhibits um, fibrolysis of um, the, the clotted plasma by the keratinocytes. So we find addition of uh, a protein is actually very effective to, to, to inhibit degradation of the clot. So this slide shows the um, architecture of um, the skin uh, with our novel HSC. Um, and you can see that the expression of K10 is very similar to native skin, um, and we can actually detect three um, distinguishable layers of the skin. Um, and if you don't have a protonin, you still get that, you know, the sort of cyst-like structures of epidermis. Keratin 10 expression persists a little longer than um, native skin, um, but also we can detect KI67 positive cells uh, in the HS, in our novel HSE to confirm that the proliferation, the proliferative cells still remain during the culture. Endogenous collagen 4 and laminin 511 is detected here uh, in red um, using specific antibodies. Um, so this is quite Im important because it shows that the basement membrane is actually formed during um, this culture period, um, which, in, which actually um, conf uh, confers the very good dermal epidermal junction. Um, and so from that, um, we've gone to test the graftability of um, the um, novel HSC in animals, and this is um, very preliminary data we've, we've used We've grafted um, immunocompromised um, nude mice for these experiments, and we've tested um, three different matrices here, uh, Integra, as I mentioned before, Metrodem and Pelnac. Um, these two are bovine-based um, collagen um, matrices, um, and that's porcine origin. Um, and you can see that the matrix does affect the outcome um, quite significantly. The PELNAC is actually um, quite spongy, and once grafted, basically there's a lot of contra contraction. 
and it basically disappears at the end of the two-week um, grafting, and it's the, this is the, the host <coughs> epidermis that is taken over. So the survival of human keratinocytes is um, monitored here uh, using uh, human-specific um, involucrin, and you can see that um, some human cells shown in brown um, still um, survive um, and able to um, populate um, after two-week grafting. So in summary, um, tissue engineering skin is, um, we think it's a very promising therapy for treatment of chronic and acute wounds, um, including burns, and providing the wound bed with the dermal scaffold um, populated by autologous um, dermal and epidermal um, cellular components can further entice host cell infiltration and vascularization to achieve wound closure. And a near native skin architecture um, is achieved by addition of coagulated human plasma. Um, and um, skin architecture and basement membrane formation was further improved by the addition of a protein, as I mentioned. The same principle um, is applicable to any uh, uh, biodegradable porous scaffold, other than Integra, um, for use in wound treatment. So it just remains to acknowledge the people involved, um, Heather Cleland, the director of the Burns unit at the Alfred, Cheng Lo, plastic surgeon in charge of the um, CA clinical trial, Mercer Harrison for um, uh, setting up uh, the quality system and Michelle and Perdita for a lot of in vitro and in vivo experimentations and the funding bodies are acknowledged um, on the right. So um, that's the uh, end of the talk and I'll take questions. Thank you. 